Okay, hello dear friends. Good evening. Such a beautiful, beautiful evening. Let's、uh, continue to read. Isika, Isaka. I have trouble to pronounce it. I think I will just read according to、uh, its uh, its spelling. Use the phonic method. Isaka, Isaka. Odysseus stood in the bronze-floored feasting hall of King Arsinous. He looked at the king, the princess, and the old blind storyteller. There was、uh, a long silence, broken at last by King Arsinous. King Arsinous said, "Odysseus, you have suffered much in your wanderings across the broad face of the world, but now." That you have reached my bronze-floored feasting hall, I swear that I will send a high-prowed ship to carry you home to rocky Isaka, and I swear by the mighty gods and goddesses that you will not return. To your homeland, empty-handed, you will have something with you to go back to your homeland. That's very kind of him. The king ordered the great chests of gold and silver and rolls of purple clothes be fetched. Purple clothes. Is that a special thing? Purple clothes. Why purple clothes? It's always mysterious, right? They were carried down to the wharf, where the ship is waiting. They were loaded onto the deck of the ship. Odysseus was let down. To the wolf, 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 wolf. As he walked across the gunplank towards the deck, he felt a hand tugging at his cloak. He turned and saw Princess Nausica. Odysseus," she said, "it is to me above all others that you owe your life. You will not forget me, will you?" Odysseus smiled. "Princess," he said, "if by the grace of the mighty gods." And the goddesses, I set foot once again on the shore of my beloved Isaka. I swear that I will remember you for as long as I draw breath.、Mm. He stepped onto the deck, and the sails were raised. The anchors were lifted. The wood oars stuck the wave, and the prow cut past through the churning waves. Through the churning waves, soon the wind was filled the sails like a swollen belly. The ship. 
made the ship, made its way out of the harbor and across the blue sea. Odysseus lay down, lay on the deck and wrapped himself in his cloak. He closed his eyes and fell into the sweet, oblivious, 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 oblivious palm of sleep. Oblivious palm of sleep. Oblivious balm, balm of sleep. All that day he slept. All that day he slept. The sun set and the sky darkened and still he slept and slept and slept. The moon rose and set. The night brightened with countless stars. That is Callisto. Osa Major, Osa Junior, Osa. Mm. The night brightened with countless stars, and, and still he was fast asleep. He was still sleeping when the ship reached the island of Isaka, Isaka, Isaka. The sailors lifted him tenderly in their arms and they waded ashore. They set him down gently on the beach with the chest of treasures beside him. Then they returned to their ship and sailed away. So Odysseus arrived Isika, Isaka. But nothing is hidden from the eyes of the mighty gods and the goddesses. Owl-eyed, Asina, Asina, the goddess of war and wisdom, was fond of Odysseus. He had been one of the bravest and shrewdest of the Greek warriors in the Trojan War. The wooden horse that had brought down the city wall had been his idea, Odysseus' idea. What if one of the wretched suitors found him sleeping on the beach? His throat would be slit before he could open his eyes. Surely he deserved better than that. With a gesture of her hand, the goddess covered the island with a wide, swirling mist. Then she strapped on her sandal of burnished gold seized her spear and flashed down out of the sky until she was standing just a short distance from where Odysseus was 
sleepy. The sun rose and uh, I see the Is that because she came out of a, a, a zoo's head? So she had this sharp signet on top of her, sharp crown on top of her head. The sun rose and shone through the white mist. The opaque light woke. Odysseus, he sat up and rubbed his eyes. He looked about him. All he could see was mist. Where am I? What is this place? Where has my bitter destiny driven me to now? Then he saw, not far away, the dim outline of a, a figure, taking it for a shepherd or a fishman. He said, stranger, tell me, where am I? What is this place? Asina answered him with the voice of a man. You must be a fool or a dolt if you don't know this place. This place is famous from Troy to the ocean stream. From the rising to the setting of the sun. This is the island of Isaka. Odysseus peered into the mist and Asina walked towards him, her gray eyes shining with light. She laughed. Noble Odysseus, you are home at last. She reached down and lifted the mist as though she were lifting a curtain. Suddenly, Odysseus saw Mount Neriton. He saw the overhanging rocks, the hills, the terraced field, the cliff, and the beaches of his native land, his own homeland. He threw himself down onto the ground and kissed the nourishing earth. Asina took, shook his shoulder, Odysseus, he said. There is no time to be wasted. First of all, we must hide these chests of treasure. She helped him. She helped him lift the great chests and carried them to a cave. She caused a huge stone to roll in front of the cave entrance. Odysseus, she said, listen, the situation is this, you are home, but alone, unknown, under a strange sail, and there is danger waiting 
where there should be a welcome. Uh, uh, there is danger instead of welcome. Asina told Odysseus about the suitors who had invaded his feasting hall. She told him about the Penelope's long, lonely wait and the, vi vi and the weaving and unraveling reveling of her loom. She told him how Telemachus had made a great journey to Sparta to visit red-haired Menelaus and the beautiful Helen in search of news of his father. And she told him that the suitors were planning to murder Telemachus on his return. When she had finished speaking, Odysseus drew his dagger from his belt. Goddess, if you would fight alongside me now, as you fought alongside Greek, when we brought down Troy's shining diadem of towers, I swear the floor of my hall would soon run, blood, run red with blood. But Asina lifted her shining figure, fingers and touched his lips, shh, Odysseus, shh, Odysseus, I had thought you were becoming wise. There is no time for acts of daring folly, Odysseus shuddered at the sudden surge of blood lust and uh, a thousand blood soaked memories that it carried in its weak. He pushed the dagger back into his scabbard. Asina smiled fondly, Odysseus, you must go as an old man now. She touched Odysseus' shoulder with her hand. As she touched him, his shoulders stooped. The hawk-like light went out of his eyes. His dark curls whitened. His arms grew thin. Oh, wow. His hands began to tremble, and he found that he was dressed in nothing but rags. You must go as an old beggar now. Do not return to your feasting hall, but go instead to the hut of your faithful swine, swine herd. You men may Io mecus, io me, io meos, io maios, io maios. Do not reveal yourself to him, but listen, and you will learn much. Odysseus nodded. 
Then he re he turned and hobbled up the hill with his back to the beach. Asina stood and watched him for a while. Then she turned on her heel and swift as sword, she flashed across the sea to Sparta. She made her way to the palace of red-haired Menelaus and beautiful Helen. She entered the bedchamber where Helen <laughs> where Telemachus was lying fast asleep on a silver bed covered with a purple blanket. She coughed discreetly. Telemachus woke with the little hairs on the back of his neck prickly. He knew he was in the presence of one of the mighty gods and the goddesses. Telemachus, he opened his eyes and gasped. Asina was standing, shimmering behind his bed. Telemachus, the time has come. For you to go home, your mother, Benelope, has been discovered by the suitors unraveling the shroud on her loom by moonlight. By moonlight. She has been forced to finish it. Now she must choose a new husband. You must Go home, but be careful. But be care careful. The suitors are planning to murder you on your return. Do not go to your father's feasting hall. Go instead to the hut of your faithful swine herd. Eumaius, Eumaius. Suddenly the goddess was gone. Telemachus was filled with spirit and awe. He prepared for his journey home right away.